Good day, wonderful citizens of South Africa. I wanted to talk to you today about a follow-up series on uh, my previous videos that I made about um, white supremacists going mad. This is part three and I wanted to talk to you about the murder of or the assassination of former president and prime minister Hendrik Verwoerd. Now what I want to open everybody's eyes to right now in this part number three is the question who is our real enemy? Is it the people that we see in the media every day? Is it the white minority capitalists? Or is it the ones that is destroying the country, namely the governing party of this country? Or is it some sinister force that is really, that we really cannot see? And I would like to believe that it is the latter. And the reason why I'm saying this to you is because of the question, why was Hendrik Verwoerd murdered in the first place? Now, Dimitri Tsafendas, the Greek man, or was he Portuguese? He was the man who, who did the assassination. And he is sort of hailed as a hero today in the books. I saw a picture of him. Dimitri Tsafendas, the man who killed Apartheid, who is now sort of seen as a hero because he killed the very system that oppressed black people for so many years. Hendrik Verwoerd was a genius, so sort of if he wasn't assassinated, the whole plans for Apartheid would have probably been still in place today. But, why was Hendrik Verwoerd really killed? Was it because he's an evil man? Or was it because he was about to do something that somebody didn't like? Now, Hendrik Verwoerd was going to take the Reserve Bank of South Africa and close it. Hendrik Verwoerd knew that the Reserve Bank of South Africa is the same as the Reserve Federal Reserve in America. Now Reserve Banks was planted in many countries around the world in order to devalue the currency of that country. To make that country desperate so they would make loans from the international um, banking system which the Rothschilds and the European bankers around the world is um, controlling. So basically uh, these people are controlling countries around the world by devaluing whatever it is. Oh yeah, there's another YouTuber. I see her. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> Let me get back to the story. So, um, what I wanted to see and uh, make everybody aware of is the fact that forget about apartheid, forget about how wrong it was. Yes, it was wrong in many ways. I'm not glorifying apartheid, but Henrik Verwoerd did a lot of things that these bankers did not like. Because as long as a country remains sovereign and their currency is strong, they are literally um, a threat to these banking systems around the world. A bank is not, cannot grow or cannot be rich as long as people have money in their pockets. So they have to create money out of nothing. And this is basically what um, President John F. Kennedy did three years prior to his assassination. And this is the very thing that got Hendrik Verwoerd assassinated as well. 
and this is the fact that J.F. Kennedy took America off the Federal Reserve and he started printing the country's own money. Now not long after his assassination they obviously opened the Reserve Bank, Federal Reserve again. But these kind of choices that Hendrik Verwoerd made as well as JF Kennedy was the fact that they put America back on the gold standard which means that their currency was backed by gold which means every dollar in the bank was actually supported by something of substantial value something that cannot lose value and this creates the foundation of any successful currency today money is no of no more value than the paper it's printed on it is absolutely worthless and the federal reserves and the reserve bank of south africa is just printing more money in order to plug up holes that uh, of a sinking ship so these international bankers need to put us and hold us down like this in order to make money out of us so that eventually they can control us and they do this through various means by infiltrating um, the banking system which they've done many many years ago hundreds of years ago and they infiltrate the government I want you guys to know this because everything is not really as it seems the choices that Hendrik Verwoerd made was basically putting South Africa on the map to become one of the most prosperous countries in the entire world. South Africa's rand was basically stronger than the American dollar around in the 1970s. But now it is actually the reverse. South Africa now needs to pay about 17 to 18 rand for one single dollar this is basically against almost any currency out there that is successful the Singapore dollar is about probably 10 rand as well as the Australian dollar um, the British pound is almost 20 rand for one British pound so um, it's really important that you guys know this. I'm not trying to um, glorify apartheid, but most people just want prosperity. They want a future for their children. They don't care who doesn't like them or who despises them. They just want equal opportunity. And the real enemy is not the one that you see with a different skin of color. It is the ones that are trying to divide races against each other using politics and also keeping countries economies down by manipulative schemes and pseudo banking systems that are really actually pulling money out of the system and causing us to become desperate for the international places like the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank and all those kind of places where pretty much those third world countries are running towards now. Mostly African countries are now um, literally giving up their sovereignty um, through fake agreements with the World Bank and IMF and all those, the UN, because there's always a condition attached. The same as China does. China, when they give you a loan or Russia gives you a loan, there's always strings attached. You need to really go and ask questions and look at things that is happening behind the scenes to actually know what is going on. It is not the stuff that you see in the news. It is not the stuff that people are gossiping about. It is not y your enemies, which you consider to be the white people or the black people uh, for that matter it is those easy evil despotisms that are trying to control the world and take away your rights as a citizen 
and give up your freedoms by putting you in those desperate situations so the only advantage that they really have over us is basically causing us to be divided against each other and for us to really box in the wind that we would really not know who our enemies are now I want to tell you the story um, it will happen a few years ago actually I think it was 2017 or 2018 I remember when uh, students protested at UCT in Cape Town that's the University of Cape Town and um, they were basically demanding free education and as a insistence on their demands for free education they basically used apartheid and colonialism well they couldn't use apartheid in, the, in this instant be, instance because the university was built and founded by a colonial, colonialist named Cecil John Rhodes but colonialism was basically um, similar to apartheid where the English basically takes control of everything they are up in all the upper ex ex excellence of society um, they are the elite they are controlling all the farms they are controlling all the government everything but uh, Cecil John Rhodes uh, founded the University of Cape Town and there was a big statue of him uh, raised up in the in front of the university and students were basically destroying this and spray painting this uh, statue after which they insisted that that it must be removed unfortunately they were not successful and uh, the statue was only removed and their needs or their wants and, and their demands were not met by getting free education which is understandable because this is a secular um, university it's, it is not a um, government funded university so what is basically what I want to tell you is that the Lord actually told me to look up the name Sissel Sissel means blind or dim sighted and when I read that up in the, on my search, I realized that, that this statue or this man named Cecil, this name represented an enemy that we cannot see. We are fighting as South Africans an enemy that we really cannot see. Our real enemy is, the, is our own blindness because we do not have spiritual sight and the Bible says that the righteous will never be forsaken nor begging bread that is in the book of Psalms in the Bible now sometimes the reason for our poverty is not because of a lack of opportunity it is really because of our spiritual blindness and our own unrighteousness God wishes that we should all have equal opportunity but sometimes it is the fact that we live in a fallen world and there are forces out there that are deliberately trying to put us into poverty so that we would commit crime and commit sin so that we would actually have something to eat and to steal, kill and destroy which is basically um, the work of Satan. Satan is the one that wants to put us all into a corner so that we would feel the need and the desire to go out there to to take things by force. Either by climbing the corporate ladder viciously through manipulation and through um, through um, selfish ambition not because you care about others and you want others to prosper 
or because you have integrity or because you want to be a better servant for Jesus Christ but because you want more things for yourself don't we all but sometimes we have wrong motives on the flip side of the coin you can use violence to get what you want and you can basically hurt other people in the process either through manipulation by demanding rights and privileges which you have not really deserved or earned and that can also be a, a, a wrong motive but I want you to guys to really think about things differently God takes care of his own children and he will not forsake or leave you but you've got to make your life right with Jesus first and all these other things which the heathen so frequently worry about those things God will give you to you freely because the Bible says do not worry what you shall eat what you shall wear and what you shall drink because all these things the heathen worry about yet your heavenly father knows that you need these things and he will give it to you freely but first seek ye the kingdom of God in all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you so God is always faithful in this world you hell will have trouble but if God takes you out of the system the system of dependence or the things of this world which is getting worse and worse and worse by the day you will not have to depend on it because God will make a way where there is no way I'm telling this to you because I love you your identity is not based in the color of your skin your identity is based on your worth in the sight of God the fact that God loves you and he has a plan for your life so give your life to Jesus and he will make all things right he will make all things brand new and he will take you out of that miry pit where you've been stuck in your entire life not knowing what to do with yourself sitting at home there during the entire lockdown not having opportunities God will open a door for you where there was no door before he will move mountains for you just trust him surrender your life to him and he will make everything brand new I don't know who that was hi everyone okay as I was talking to you guys and imparting some faith there was this guy that um, approached me from outside the fence and I really saw that the, he was down and out and he needed some help so he was asking me for some food just so that he can feed his, uh, himself and his boy and um, I really felt in my heart that it was okay to, to, to go and help this guy so I just went around and went outside of the gate and I I said what do you need and then uh, we both went to the grocery store and I'm not gonna say what I needed to do to help him but this was this was basically God proving to me what I was just uh, trying to tell you right now is that when you really need God's help he will not forsake you and initially the guy told me that he was a Muslim but um, when I started sharing my faith with him he started he suddenly started opening up to me and he said that he is actually born a Muslim but he uh, turned a Christian not too long ago and that um, at the moment he's just in a very very deep and tight space in his life where um, he lost his job he doesn't have food to eat and he's trying to prov provide for his family and um, yeah, God just placed me there at the right time at the right place and making this video so that I would be there at the right time at the right place and our paths could cross and this is not to my own glory and I obviously can't do this with everybody that crosses my path but um, I really know God was leading this moment and that he will not forsake you in your time of need so I am really really encouraged by this that God would look out for somebody else 
and that he would use me to to actually um, to fulfill that need so obviously I'm not I wasn't I I was going to take a selfie with this guy but obviously he was in a hurry so I couldn't do so but never mind the glory doesn't go to me and I'm not looking for a reward either so um, guys just be encouraged in the Lord he's not gonna leave you he's not going to leave you alone God is faithful and he is just so when you need him he's gonna come through for you don't lose your faith don't give up God is real God is faithful and he looks out for his own give your heart to Jesus don't make it a conditional surrender God if you do this for me then I will do this or then I will surrender do it now the Holy Spirit is pressing on your heart to surrender your life and to make right with him he is the bread of life so I love you and I leave you in the wonderful name of Jesus until next time God bless